Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Okay, let's start putting this material together. As always, I've got my object loaded. I'm in the shading tab. I have viewport shading enabled and I have a principled BSDF shader applied to the object. So let's take a look at that first. We're going to need to change the specular tint to 0.5. I think everything else, mm, let's have a look, sheen, sheen tint, specular tint, sheen tint to zero. Everything else I think we're going to leave the same. We can always come back to those if we need to. What I do need to add though is a glossy shader, so glossy BSDF. And of course, to mix those two shaders together, I need an add shader. Color, I am actually going to make quite a mid gray. So let's say 0.15, maybe a bit less, 0.1. Let's go with that. The other two values we're going to control with other nodes. So we'll come back to that. Okay, so shift A and we're going to search for a Voronoi texture. Of course, we're going to add a mapping and a texture coordinate to it. I did that by pressing control T because I have the node wrangler add-on enabled. If you don't, you can always shift A and search for them. Make sure to take the object output from the texture coordinate into the vector of the mapping node. Uh, we're going to get a color ramp. Plug the distance from that Voronoi texture into the factor of the color ramp. And we're also going to duplicate that for a second time. Pop that in there. We're going to change the feature output to distance to edge. I'm going to shift these along a bit. We need a mix RGB. In fact, we actually need two, so I'm just going to duplicate that. For the first one, we're changing the blending mode to add. And for the second one, multiply. Take the color from the first color ramp into color one and set the factor at one. For color two, we're going to try and change it to a goldy color. So, mm, Let's go for something like that. And I'll copy that hex code. I might need it again in a minute. So that just to remind you that was, let's say 0 0.075 for the hue, 0 0.8 for the saturation and 0.24 for the value, just to make it easier. Recopy that hex code. Now the color from the add, we're gonna put in slot two of the multiply for color one, we're going to bring up the color from the second color ramp. And the factor we're going to set at 0.8. Let's plug this into our base color and see what's happening. Okay. Now on this first color ramp, 
we're going to move the white to 0 0.5 on this second color ramp we're going to add a third color and move it to 0 0.15 I'm going to change that to the same goldy color that I did up here for the black I'm going to paste that hex code in to use that gold color but then I'm going to drop the value let's say to 0.1 maybe 0 0.05 yeah. now the color from the add mix shader I'm going to take into the specular of the main principled shader and also the roughness. I'm going to take the color from the second color ramp into the metallic of the principled shader, but I'm going to put an insert, uh, an invert node in between the two. Set the value to one. I want a bump node for a tiny bit of texture. That gets plugged into the normal of the principal shader. And for the height value, I'll use the color from the second color ramp that we used. I'm setting the strength to 0 0.01 and the distance to 0 0.1. Hardly anything at all. Now I'm going to take the color value from the multiply node into the roughness of the glossy. And for the normal, I'm going to take the normal from the bump node. I'm going to change that distribution method to sharp. And then we have a couple of changes to the settings over this end. For that second color ramp, we're bringing this white value let's say to 0.65 for the scale on the Voronoi texture I'm going to increase it to sorry decrease it to 2 change the X scale to 50 and the Y and Z to 0.1 now that's cool texture as it is but between the texture coordinate and the mapping node we're going to apply a noise texture and a mix RGB. Set the factor to 0.1 and take the object value from the texture coordinate and plug it into slot 2 of the mix shader change the scale to 2.1 detail to 5 roughness and distortion both to 0 and that pretty much is us done okay so I'm going to send that to render I'm using the cycles render engine a thousand samples and I am using the denoise feature might change that up to optics as I've got an NVIDIA graphics card and we'll see what we come out with. <coughs> okay and there we go there we have our finished texture looks cool doesn't it if you found this useful please remember to give the video a thumbs up 
and of course subscribe for future content. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Thank you.